Oh my god, everybody, welcome back to the 36th annual Joe's is still kicking stream, but maybe not for much longer. Holy shit. Now, I would sp spin the wheel of old, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna override the wheel just this once, because it's time for some moral bankruptcy. It didn't land on it today, but you are not ready for moral bankruptcy. It didn't land on it, and I kind of hope that it would. So, what are we gonna do for moral bankruptcy? Well, you know what the theme was today for moral bankruptcy? You know what it was gonna be? It was gonna be edutainment! I know, edutainment was gonna be the theme of today. So that means, uh, you don't get to play games with me, uh, for this brief session. Instead, you get to see me enjoy, uh, some entertainment that you will almost certainly despise, but I'll like it. That's how, uh, moral bankruptcy works. I do something that I will enjoy, but no one else will. <laughs> Alright. Let's get launch box up. Uh, see if I can find some quality edutainment. Who's playing Ninja Gaiden Black? Nice. Oh, okay, I might be able to raid him, actually. That might work out just fine. Here we go. Yeah, music gone. Okay. Alright, what edutainment do we want today? What do we want? Uh, I want people to really suffer. The ancient world is too interesting. Creatures that tear people apart. Doggos. We could do doggos. Nah, that's too cute. That's too cute. Uh, it's gotta be something shit. You gotta learn something. Oh, I know. Let's learn about the oceans. <laughs> Here we go. Who's ready for edutainment? Here we go. I don't care if you're not. That's what this is all about. Oh, I gotta switch it to, uh, to, here we go. It's gotta switch chats over. There we go. Hello, chat. How's it going? Welcome to Microsoft Oceans. <laughs> Circa 1995, it looks like. Oh, dear. That's some quality edumatainment right here. Oh, dear. We're gonna learn all about the ocean shit for about 10 minutes or so. I don't know. How are we going to do this? Oh, I guess we could pick a guide, I suppose. We can go on a nice guided tour to learn all about the ocean. <laughs> are you having fun yet? You're not allowed to. That's that's the kind of the point of all this. Here we go. Oh, look at all the guides here. So many of them. Oh, God, if we were doing pirate stream, we could go We can go on a guided tour with Eli there, the 18th century seaman. But that's too much fun. We can't have fun. We go, we, we're not allowed to have fun. Hello, mates. Yeah. I can not call you mates, can't I? Ahoy. My name's Eli. Mm. Eli Higgins, that is, rightly. Hey. Choose one of these here tours and come on this venture with me. Mm. I'm not sailing alone. Not me. Well, you'll have to today because no fun allowed. <laughs> of course. Okay, who's going to be the dullest one of these? I've got to pick the dullest one. we got Kim, who's a solar sailor, and that's kind of exciting, yeah. Uh, we got Curtis, the international rescue worker. That's kind of exciting, yeah, kind of. We've got an alien visitor, Z uh, Zarka, who's more annoying, really, than charming. So, yeah, fuck that. Uh, Frank is a beginning scuba dive. Basically, um, basically a retiree who's learning to scuba dive. And then we got Rebecca, the oceanographer. Yeah, we're gonna go with her. She's also flat-chested, so nobody wins. It, it, not even me, technically. Fuck it. Fuck it. Hi, my name's Rebecca, and I'm an oceanographer. Hey. Choose a tour and let me share with you some of the amazing things I've learned. Fantastic. Let's go on one guided tour, why not? Outer space and inner space. Wait, hang on a second. The ocean and space together at last? How does that work? Well, we're going to find out together. <laughs> and I'm going to, hopefully, hopefully it's not going to be too entertaining for anyone. Here we go. When I was a kid, I wanted to be either an astronaut or an oceanographer. Oh, now you can be both. Instead of a space traveler, I chose to be an aquanaut, a water traveler in the oceans. You'd be surprised how many what? similarities That's there are between working in the oceans and working in outer space. Ah. Yeah, sort of floating around and Satellite check. navigation is a fantastic breakthrough in studying the oceans. Yeah. It allows us to pinpoint where we are, even when we're hundreds of miles from the nearest land. Nice. Isn't it ironic that devices in outer space help us find our way around the ocean? Click my picture yeah. to find out more. That's pretty ironic. Oh my god, it's interactive media. <laughs> Seriously, I learned shit from these kind of programs back in the in the in the 90s. Like I used to boot these things up all the time, and I still remember like most of this shit. <laughs> I remember all of the stuff. I didn't I don't remember anything from school. Fuck school. This was the best way to fucking learn things. Play GPS. Let's see, this is this how a GPS works. You got a satellite. Hey, there's a boat on the sea, and then there's uh there's Lauren. Which is, yeah, it's sort of ground sonar, I suppose. There we go. Sophisticated systems using satellites, radio beams, calculate ships' positions. Even in the roughest seas, the global positioning system, GPS, also used in aviation and by military, by the military, um, involves a number of satellites orbiting the Earth. 
By transmitting and receiving signals, a user can determine the exact position of a vessel anywhere in the world. The Loran Long Range Navigation System, developed by the Allies for use in the Atlantic during World War II, that's the one with Hitler in it. Fuck yes, that's the one with Hitler in it. Come on, yes, here it is. When you ride alone, you ride with Hitler. <laughs> Join a car sharing club today. Don't let the ghost of Dolphy sit in the car. Don't let him sit shotgun. It's not good. Yes, I could use it today. I love it. Oh, yeah. It's since expanded into a global network of transmitters. By monitoring Lauren's precisely synchronized radio signals, ships and aircraft are able to determine their positions at sea. There we go, there's a communication satellite in orbit. All right, let's click this uh, this uh, rather dull bent here and let's keep going. All right, oh, wait, no, there's the cursor, <laughs> it's there. Pictures taken by satellites and by astronauts in space are invaluable to scientists on Earth too. Mm. Now we have visual proof how a process on land like logging, farming, or manufacturing can affect the rivers and oceans. <laughs> oh it's no. It's amazing what you can see if you just back off 200 miles. <laughs> it's amazing what you see. You go out into space and you're like, oh yeah, we're really fucking Earth up. <laughs> Shit, look at that. <laughs> There's a lot of damage this deforestation is doing to the world. Damn. All right. When the delicate balance of a planet's climate is upset in some way, a new equilibrium eventually establishes. So that's why, see, there you go. That's why climate change is bullshit. Because the, the planet always corrects itself eventually. However, the planet's ecology may be greatly changed as a result. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you learn to swim, you'll be fine. Out to sea. Fewer trees means that the land is more easily eroded, so more sediment is washed into rivers and seas. In addition to small, uh, smothering coral reefs, this sediment also kills fish by reducing the amount of oxygen available in the water. Oh dear. Cutting down and drying out plants... Re release vapor, water vapor into the atmosphere in a process called transpiration. As more and more forests are cut down or burnt, decreasing amounts of water vapor and oxygen are recycled back into the air through transpiration. The burning of forests increases the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, which is bad. And that traps heat and contributes to the greenhouse effect. Ah, the good old days when we used to call it that instead. <laughs> it's a much better term for it, I think. Climate change. It's like, yeah, no shit. Climate is changing. Greenhouse effect. Uh, yeah. Everything's going to get really fucking hot if we keep cutting down trees. Oh, no. Each time I step into a submersible, I feel like I'm inside a shuttlecraft. We have to worry about life support, Make communications, believe. propulsion. All the same things that you'd have to keep track of as a space traveler. Hmm. Well, almost all. I mean, you know, dying alone in space. You don't have to worry about that. And eh, dying alone under the ocean, too. Oh, there's a fosh. There he goes. Hey, buddy. I just love the just the random shit that happens in these old programs. Oh, it's got a movie. Might as well watch a movie. Challenging work. Oh. What is this then? Oh, look at that really blocky MPEG file. submersibles, we can finally explore the ocean depths. Scientists can now study new areas, like deep volcanic vents. Ah. It's <laughs> good old technology, it's good for that. Uh, yep, that looks like a vent. <laughs> it looks good. Well, that's us done. <laughs> oh, this one's a Japanese one. Oh, look at that, designed to dive to depths of 6,500 meters. Nice. That's pretty deep. That's a, that's a, that's the first time you've ever seen a Japanese anything go deep into anything, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, all right, there we go. But yeah, you got, you got to love those little bit crushed movies there. There we go. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Ah, oh, the good old days. Uh, good old Windows 95 days. I miss them. All right, let's keep going then. You know how we've sent out spacecraft to try to map other planets? Well, it's nearly as hard to map the bottoms of oceans on our own planet. Yeah. After all, the ocean bottom is miles below the surface in many places, <laughs> and the water pressure is far too great for any human to explore down there. Oh, yeah, you get fucking crushed by that pressure. It's great. Computer General Madam Venus allows us to see through its thick clouds of carbon dioxide. Oh my god. Venus is looking pretty hot right now, if you know what I mean. Our planet is unique in our solar system because here water can exist in three different states. Vapor, liquid, and solid. See? We're like really cool like that. Oh dear. A uh, unique range of temperatures and pressures found on our planet allows water to exist in such varied forms as the solid mass of ice cap, the liquid of a shimmering sea, and the wispy vapor of a cloud. Uh. To see what things look like miles below the surface, we have to let machines do the exploring. Oh, it's the Jason. This is Jason Jr. exploring uh. the wreck of the Titanic in 4,000 meters of water. That's uh. over 13,000 feet below the surface. Jason and robots like him can transmit pictures and other data, 
So although we have to stay on the surface, we can see what the robot sees. Yeah. Controlling these robots from the surface takes a little practice, too. Imagine playing a video game through a cable that's miles long. Oh. Uh, the, shouldn't the cable not really matter all that much? Maybe they're talking about something else. But still, I mean, yeah, it's a good thing I wasn't controlling this, Jason, because, uh, yeah, when we played the DOS game uh, Riptide last week, uh, I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> I didn't Jason very well, so I'll just leave that to the professionals, I think. Oh, my goodness. We can also use sonar to find out about the shapes and distances of objects around us including those on the ocean floor. Hmm. It's amazing to think that you can draw a map by bouncing sound off of surfaces, isn't it? Oh, it's like uh, Scan a Sombre, a game that I haven't streamed yet, but I absolutely should. I think it's the one uh, game by Introversion Software that I haven't actually streamed yet. I could be mistaken. Oh, I haven't done Defcom either, but that's not really much of a game anyway. But yeah, that looks like Scan a Sombre. Sonar scan of wrecked so uh, schooner on the ocean floor. There we go. Avoiding a disaster at sea is especially important nowadays since commercial ships often carry toxic cargoes that can, be f that can foul beaches and kill marine life. Oh dear. And probably create mutants as well while you're at it. That's, that's how Aquaman grew an extra appendage or two. Of course, this guy wouldn't think we're so technologically advanced. Dolphins have always been experts at using sound to navigate. Some tests show that blindfolded dolphins can not only tell where an object is, but what it is, how dense it is, and even whether or not it has another object inside of it. Sometimes I'm not so sure that people are the most intelligent life forms on this planet. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that, though. <laughs> dolphins are pretty rapey, though. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yeah, isn't... Uh, oh, nobody, don't you have an... Uh... Don't you have a horrific fear of the underwater? This must be hell for you right now. Because there's so much water. I mean, kind of grainy and pixelated in GIF form, but still, <laughs> this water must be terrifying. Oh, dear. It oh. truly is like a different planet down here. Check out this volcanic vent. The most life hey. on Earth depends on photosynthesis, the conversion of light into energy. Hmm. Plants get their energy from light. Other animals get energy from eating those plants and so on. But life around volcanic vents is unique. Chemosynthesis, the conversion of chemicals into energy, is the rule here, not photosynthesis. Also, really good to use on your cancer as well, I hear. <laughs> Finding chemo. There's much more to investigate, ah. but I'm out of time for now. <sighs> Choose another so of my tours to learn more about oceanography, or go off on an adventure with another of the expert guides. Don't worry, I'm not going to put you through on your own. You'll you can explore your incredible own. sights. <laughs> There's so much to see out there. Now, I could play one of the games, but no, that would be too fun. But I'm not going to put you through another one of these. I'm sure you're all wanting to kill yourselves right now. Oil and water. Oh, there goes the tanker. <laughs> We're all fucked. Them birds are going to be very oily. It's calm now, but storms, fires, and leaks on and around oil rigs can spell disaster for both workers and the environment. Mm. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going to be able to get my crusty burger. Oh dear, good shit. Well, uh, how do I close this thing? Uh, uh, I've forgotten. Help? Uh, no. Options. It, oh wait, I know how. Hang on. What, what am I doing? There we go. Uh, 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 off. Program manager. Close. Oh, wait for the sound. Wait for the sound. Oh yeah, Windows 3.1. I love it. <laughs> oh, I hope you didn't enjoy that because I did. <laughs> That's what moral bankruptcy it's all about. Oh, grand old time. I do love hearing about the ocean and stuff like that. You know what? I'm, I'm a fish fanatic, I am. Oh, dear. My favorite fish? Probably the pipe fish, I would say. I know it's a bit of a, a weird choice, but I mean, you know, if it looks like grass, then you, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing as a species. So there you have it. That was uh, Moral Bankruptcy with uh, Microsoft Oceans. It's a thing that exists, and I, for one, am pretty happy that it does. I hope you don't, though. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I know, everyone hates me now. Everyone hates me, but I don't give a shit, because that's what Moral Bankruptcy is. Frankie!